<laughs> oh, you guys ready for this week's Cusco Uncut? Those of you turning in for the first time, we do three videos a week. Two of them are edited so that I look super perfect, just like I actually am perfect, but I edit the videos to make myself look perfect, even more perfect. This one, we don't cut at all. Okay, so yeah, the pack, I've been hiking 40 pound pack on my back, just warming up and, and practicing training for some real backpacking with the family at some point. And you're wondering probably 40 pound pack, how's it that heavy? It doesn't look that big, right? Oh, but what you got in that pack, Cusco? I'll show you guys. Oh, so today we are going to be talking about, here, before I open up the pack, let me tell you, I've got a topic. If you remember in the last video, if you guys are subscribed, if you watch the videos, you know that I asked for you guys to send me some topics that you wanted to hear me talk about. And so this week we got a comment from Ice SCK. And I don't know if this is a he or she. I'm going to assume he with the use of the word brother here. Watching your videos always brightens up my day, brother. I hope all is well with you and the family. As for a topic of discussion, what do you think about people getting into the reptile world for the reptile world for the purpose of creating a breeding business? I, for one, am all for it. I love AEP's approach to the game, and I plan on starting a breeding business myself. I've got mixed feelings on the subject. Hold on, let's check out the pack. Water bottle, definitely not too much weight. Gallon of water, mm -hmm. gotta stay hydrated out there. And a brick. <laughs> All right, so after I'm done talking about this stuff, if we have time, I'm going to do one of two things. You guys have sent me a bunch of cool stuff. A lot of times I get stickers and cool letters, but you guys are starting to really up your game there with the, the mail. I appreciate it. Or, or I'm going to feed these rabbits the retics, one or the other. Leave a comment down below. Which one do you think I'm going to do? Hmm? Okay, okay, so getting into it for starting a breeding business. Let me make sure I read that exactly right. Getting the topic of what do you think about people getting into the reptile world for the purpose of creating a breeding business? Now, the one thing right off the bat is if you're getting into it for the purpose of a breeding business, you know, a business needs to make money. So it's you're not talking about a hobby supporting itself, which is what a lot of people do. I'm talking about a business makes money, turns profit. And were you not into the reptile world before? <sighs> I'm out of breath. <laughs> I was going up some pretty steep hills. <sighs> I worry about people doing it just for money because it's not just like any other business. There's, there's live animals involved. And this is an obvious topic of controversy because of that reason. It's like people or worried about other people getting so concerned about just the money, which if it's truly a business, that's the main concern of a business is to make money. If you're not making money, it's not a business. And then the animals having to suffer for that, you know, the animals taking a loss, like putting the money ahead of the animal's welfare. That's the biggest concern right off the bat. Now you brought up AEP. I, you probably know, I know Miguel personally. I know that Miguel loves his animals. I know that he takes really good care of them. Miguel also came into it with lots of other successful businesses running already and lots of capital to put into the reptile business that he started, which is something that I think is very crucial to having a successful reptile business. You've got to put lots of money into just the animals to start with so that you have high quality animals to produce more high quality animals. And, and then you got to get all the caging. And then there's so many hidden costs with breeding reptiles that there's that, that joke that I'd seen going around for a long time, which is... If you want to make a million dollars in the reptile business, start with a billion. <laughs> and there's some truth to that. There's a reason that that takes hold as a thing, because there is definitely truth to that statement. You, it takes a lot of capital to get something started. Not that you couldn't build, start smaller. Now, I personally, I, I, I really like when people want to turn their hobby into a business. You know, somebody wants to do something they love, 
and make it into a business. Not, not trying to knock, just get into it just for the money, but I do have my reservations with that for the reasons I stated before, which is the animal suffering because you're just in it to make money. Um, so yeah, I, I originally wanted to, and still have some aspirations to have a breeding business. Now, at this moment, I believe if you're speaking strictly the money I bring in from producing animals, it doesn't quite cover my cost. I think I'm at this point when it comes to just the breeding spot, you know, because I make a lot of money doing videos and working with Freedom Breeder and um, all this other stuff that I do doing the reptile shows. But when it comes to just the breeding side, I'd say that the animals I produce at least cover my food bills and cover all my caging and my electricity costs. So I'd say at this point, the hobby is supporting itself. But I did want to start it as a business. And I, I did a lot of research into that. I wrote out a whole business plan. I did uh, financial forecasting and tried to project out several years, how, you know, integrating in as well, like the, the slow drop of the price of morphs as they become more av available on the market. And all those different things. And it obviously can be done. There's lots of people out there. Well, I wouldn't say a lot of people, but there, there are many people out there, several people out there that have successful reptile breeding businesses. Justin Kabilka comes to mind as well. He's got a very successful breeding business. And Justin also takes really good care of his animals too. And so those are the type of businesses I would really like to see when it comes to reptile breeding businesses. People that do it well, have a passion for it. I really have a bias towards people that got into it and already like really loved reptiles from the early age, you know, from kids. Cause, uh, that's, that's that, that shows that they had that first and then decided I want to take this and see if I can make a living with it you know, make or at least have it support itself, but ultimately make a living. Um, I do worry about people getting into it just for the money. I, I, that worries me. Um, I just, I don't know. It's, it's, it rubs me the wrong way. Honestly, it does. Like, it's like, you just want to make money with them. Like, I just makes me kind of feel like, uh, man, that's, that's your motivations. I feel like they're in the wrong spot, maybe. And that the animals are eventually going to suffer because that was the main goal was to make money from the start. And so that's where I stand on it. Um, I think it can be done well. I mean, if you, if you really put the welfare of the animals above profit, which is going to hurt your business. It's going to hurt your business and no doubt about it. Like if, you know, because if you got an animal, say, that is not doing so hot, isn't producing well and might need to go to the vet, might need lots of work, um, it can get expensive to treat that animal. It would be much less expensive to just um, euthanize it or just, you know, eliminate it from your breeding colony. That's going to be more cost effective. It's going to be better for the business. Um Yeah. So that's that's why I'm torn on that. This subject, it's a it's a hot hot topic a little bit you know people get really emotional about it i, I guess I, I could too i mean it makes sense you know pe there's a lot of people out there that have been keeping snakes and really really care for these animals and, and reptiles and um they don't like to see them suffer because they care a lot about these creatures and it makes sense you know so as long as you can uh, have strong business ethics which many, many businesses suck at and i mean i was watching a documentary recently about like dupont knowingly poisoning large parts populations of people in the name of cutting costs and making profit it happens in businesses all the time it's a shame um and greed is a greed is a powerful thing and sometimes people suffer for it so i say if you really want to do it go for it and uh just you know keep those things in mind and if you do things well, Garrett, my buddy Garrett as well, he successfully has a reptile breeding business. And he also has very good business business ethics and takes very good care of the animals, take, pays a lot of attention to what happens with these animals, where they go. And so it can be done. You can have a good, strong reptile breeding business and not lose your moral character. It's possible. I see it happen all the time with my friends. So, uh I feel like I answered the question. I feel like I want to read it one more time just to make sure that I answered it well. But yeah, no, um, definitely don't want to put a damper on what your dreams are, but also I'm just looking out for the animals and that, that it stays good. Yeah, I think, that, I think I've spoken my mind well enough on this subject. If you guys want me to talk about anything else on a Cusco and Cut, just leave a comment down below. I am totally open to speaking about anything really i have no subject is off topic for me i'll freedom of speech baby america <laughs> for real um 
I was going to either open boxes or feed the retakes. I think that the boxes will keep a little longer than these rabbits. So I think what we'll do is we'll feed the rabbits. But I'll save these boxes for another video. How about that? Sound good? I'm going to get you guys off this and switch to the microphone up there. And we'll get some retakes fed up in this piece, biatch. Yeah. Get off there. Get off there. Hi. Oh, loud. Let's turn the exposure up on this bad boy. Just a couple notches. A couple notches for your botches. Ah. Well, she looks hungry. <laughs> she looks very hungry. You just stay in there for a second. Let me find the biggest rabbit. All right. Here we go. I, I don't remember how I do this. Which rabbit's the bigger? There we go. It's the one problem with drop down doors. They like, you know. Yeah, there we go. What's up? <laughs> Come on, wrap her up. That's my technique. <laughs> Never figure out which way these things go. One or the other, one or the other. Come on, let's go. Time's a cooking, time's a cooking. Think about that. Woo! You missed it. Try again. There you go. Yeah. Halo. We've got a stool around here somewhere. Let's see if Halo's hungry. She's on the other side, don't worry. Hey, you guys need to come up here. Come on, Halo, come get this rabbit. That's not the rabbit. <laughs> she almost came out and grabbed my face. Crazy snake. Good girl. Good thing for fast reflexes. All right, guys, we're out of here. I hope you enjoyed today's uncut. Enjoys. Enjoys it. Later. Uh, aloha. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Love you guys.